Out of all the Ravens draft picks, which one will have the biggest impact right away? Rumors have been saying that Zach Ertz could possibly be a post-June 1st cap cut for the Philadelphia Eagles. If that happens, should the Ravens triple dip at the tight end position and sign him? In order for this season to be considered a successful one by the Ravens, what do they need to accomplish? These and many more on NFL questions from subscribers. Boom! Don't get mad. Uh -huh. It's just what it is. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. A uh, what question from subscribers is is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL questions from subscribers, then you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I mean, speaking of the patrons, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to y'all, man. Now, this episode of NFL Questions from Subscribers is a very special one because we have a special guest, and that is none other than Jose Verduc. 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 Jose V, a.k.a. Joe Nubo. So let's welcome him to the channel. Team Keep It Clean. We are joined today by the artist formerly known as Joe Nubo, Jose V. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. Let them know where they can find you at. What's going on, team? Keep it clean. Jose Verdusco right here. Um, as my guy Ing said over here, the artist formerly known as Joe Nubo. You can still feel free to call me that. I go by Joe. I go by Nubo. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel where I mostly discuss the Ravens. It is Jose Verdusco. Um, I know it's a hard name to spell, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's actually not too hard if you actually look at it. It's, it's, it's spelled like it sounds. Um, it has a Z instead of an S, but anyway, I'm, I'm starting to ramble as I usually do. But yeah, usually the Ravens is my main topic, uh, but I've tried to start expanding to other topics and I, I think it's going pretty well. So, uh, so yeah, check that out. Check me out on Twitter as well. It is at NF Podcast Live and, uh... Yeah, just give me a follow, man, if you love the Ravens. All right, cool. And thanks for coming on again, too. Now, I wanted to ask you, what made you uh, start doing YouTube? Oh, man. So <laughs> I I think I started about three years ago, maybe even longer now. It's It's been a while that I've been doing this. Um, or, originally, I started my channel because I used to work at a warehouse. Mm -hmm. I used to work at a warehouse, and I used to love just – chopping it up with my coworkers about football and stuff about the NFL, but it wasn't enough, you know, to me, because I, I just love talking about football so much that it, I just felt like, and especially with the Ravens, I didn't really have any other Ravens fans that were working with me and none that I knew personally. Right. So I couldn't right. really discuss the Ravens uh, with anybody and I really wanted to. So that's why pretty much I started my YouTube channel yeah. and yeah, man, we've just gone from there. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's getting rolling a little bit. So, but yeah, originally that's why I actually started my channel. Cause I just wanted to share my thoughts on the Ravens. Really? That's, that's really how it started. Okay. And now real quick, before we get into it, just some random questions. What was your worst, your least favorite part of this last football season? Huh? Okay. Um, no fans, no oh, fans. I think, I think that was because. Uh, someone told me, I don't know if this is true or not, uh, someone told me that Lamar Jackson, our quarterback, obviously, didn't, he didn't feel the energy the same, like, in the games, oh, yeah. because there was no fans, and I, I no, could I totally see that, see that. yeah, mm -hmm. I could totally see that being true, uh, it's just not the same, you know, football, the passion, you need to have the fans there, it's a lot, I would, uh, compare it to professional wrestling, right, without the fans, no, it's, it's just not the same, that's, that's why, like, Ever since the whole virtual thing going on in WWE, I just, I can't watch it. It's just, yeah. I'm sorry, it's unwatchable <laughs> to me. Uh, but, but yeah, man, I probably the no fans. So I'm hoping that there is fans this season because, man, mm -hmm. the, it's desperately needed. It really is. Oh, yeah, yeah. This it, is definitely going to be fans this season because they started yeah. putting fans in toward the end of last season. And, and a lot of teams have already said, like, hey, we're going to be packing them stadiums out. So. Uh, yeah, because that was uh, especially the first game of the season because that was the first time we had had that experience. It was like super awkward, man. 
Yeah. Like, I think on uh, Browns, their very first play was an interception uh, where Calais Campbell tipped it and Marlon Humphrey caught the pick. Right. But um, usually at M&T Bank, you would hear the crowd going crazy right. and stuff, and you're just looking around like, okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, that's a good point that you made, too, about the fans is that, uh, and what you said, what Lamar said, is because um, w- with us at home, when you hear them fans going crazy, if you're not at the game, if you hear them fans going crazy, you will start going even more crazy than you already might be. Oh yeah. So um, it just, yeah, it, it wasn't the same this year. And even when they, like, at least at M&T Bank Stadium, I know Dolphins, they had a lot more people. At M&T Bank, they didn't have too many people. So even when they did put the fans back in there, it just, it still wasn't the same. It was better, but it wasn't the same. Definitely. So I just want to say, man, huge thanks to my guy in Raven because – there's a video somewhere like you have to dig deep for it. But when I was like Uh-oh. first starting out, first oh. starting out, man, like <laughs> this was back when I was with my guy, Andrew. Yeah, um, shout out to him. the Rams fan, right? That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. And I asked in Raven, I'm like, I didn't even think he would reply to me. I'm like, hey, man, would you want to come on real quick? Talk some talk some football. And it was it was a mess. Like I had my camera dying and it was just so many problems, <laughs> man. So. But shout out to Ing Raven, bro, because he came through and I, I didn't think he would. And and he's been a great dude. He really has. So no, shout man, out to and, Team Keep It Clean. No, I appreciate it. And you were the one that actually said, too, because I remember because um, that was back when I was at, working at my job. And you were like, man, you're taking all these breaks. What, what's yeah. going to happen if, uh, <laughs> if if something happens at your job, if you get like let go yeah. of something? Yeah. You know, so if, hey, mm-hmm. if, if it happens, it happens. But yeah, yep. nah, I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, of course. So all right. So we got some real good questions, like we always do. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's do it. Let's get into it. All right, first question came from my guy, Nick Brick. He said, which draft pick would you say you're higher on than most fans? <laughs> well, hmm. for me, um, I know everybody loved that Bateman pick, but I love, love, love that Bateman pick. Because um, that was the that was lit- literally the first receiver, and I think actually the first player that I watched film on. And as soon as I watched film on him, I was like, oh, yeah, please, Ravens, please make it happen. I didn't think they were going to make it happen. So when they made it happen, I, I, I just went crazy, man. I was so happy, man. Who, who was yours? Yeah, I mean, uh, the Bateman pick was just de- definitely my favorite of the draft. I will mm-hmm. say that. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to go against the grain here because my guy has been getting a lot of hate, this draft pick. Oh. And it's it's our other first-round pick, Mr. Double mm-hmm. O, as I call him, Mr. Owe. Uh Odafe Owe, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. Jason Owe, right? So I'm not saying that I think he's going to come in and immediately contribute. That's not mm-hmm. at all what I'm saying. I do think that he's going to take some time in the oven. And a lot of Ravens fans don't like that. They want, if, you, if you're going to draft an edge rusher, he has to contribute instantly, right? That's what everybody wants. And I totally right. get that. But just think what could happen if this guy can actually develop, bro. If he can develop his pass rushing moves if he can develop a plan when he actually goes to rush the passer i mean just just from a pure athletic standpoint this guy is a freak he yeah, is an absolute monster right ran a 438 i believe uh so if we can actually develop him which i do tend to trust the ravens when it comes to edge rushers now <laughs> I know uh, my guy Pressure Daddy, a.k.a. Uh, Jalen Ferguson, has yet to develop. But if you guys watched my video from like two years ago, I did not like Jalen Ferguson before the draft. So mm. I'll just put that out there. But Owe, if he can develop, bro, I think that he is going to be like just a double-digit sack guy. I do. Mm. Okay. But we'll have to see, man. But yeah, I'll, I'll go with Owe just because everybody, you know, is, is pretty down on that pick. <laughs> Okay. And his other part of the question, he said, who do you think will have the most immediate impact? I um, I wouldn't go Bateman. I wouldn't even go Owe. Owe I mean, I wouldn't um, – I would go uh, Cleveland. Yep. I would go yep. Cleveland, offensive line. Uh, and he's an interior offensive lineman, and that's where Ravens uh, struggled at the most. And I think with them drafting him – I think he'll be in the mix to be a starter. I think he will end up getting a starting job, but of course that all has to be determined. Um, But I think with them drafting him, that will have the biggest impact and the most immediate impact on the Ravens because before anybody even touches the field, there's a big position change. And that would be uh, Bozeman moving over to center. 
Um, and, and then that would allow him to be at his natural spot. Uh, and hopefully the snaps can be on point. And also another thing, too, speaking about the snaps, and this even goes higher than the uh, the center to quarterback exchange. Hopefully the Ravens can implement some more plays where Lamar Jackson is under center because that was a big thing last oh, yeah. year with the bad snaps. It's like, okay, if they're bad snaps, if it's a windy game, if it's a rainy game, all right, we'll have some plays ready where Lamar will be under center. Yes. Like, so <laughs> – it just um so I, I will go with uh with, with Cleveland. So who who would you think would have the most biggest impact, the most imme- immediate impact? I I'm definitely gonna have to agree for for definitely some reasons. But I want to go back to what you said about going under center. Mm-hmm. I don't understand that Patriots game is the probably the main example. Like, what did the Patriots do with Cam Newton? What did Bill Belichick do? He said, "Hey man, look, the weather is terrible." Let's not go out and let's not snap the football out of the shotgun. Let's have Cam Newton go under center. And that's pretty much how they won the game. They just coached better than, than we did. Let's be honest here. Uh, yeah, they have to implement plays under center more, especially yeah. in these bad weather games. So mm-hmm. I absolutely agree with you. But going back to the original point, I have to agree with you as well. I have to go Ben Cleveland. And usually, as we know, under Harbs, he doesn't like playing rookies uh, instantly, yeah. uh, usually. But I think that this might be one of the, the few occasions that we actually see Ben Cleveland start taking snaps from day one. Mm. Because you saw how hype they were. You heard all the news about how this was John Harbaugh's pick, Ben Cleveland. He wanted to trade up for the guy. So I could definitely see Ben Cleveland coming in and being a day one starter. So I absolutely agree with you. Okay, cool, cool. Oh, and now uh, he said, who do you think will be the biggest surprise? Hmm. Interesting. Well, man, this is this is going to take me a while to think about. I have to go through. <laughs> well, I, I, just, I, I, I just did a draft grades video, and I can't even think of the names right now. Um, but go ahead if you want to if you want to start. Yeah, I would say, oh, man, and it's tough because. I, I hope this doesn't end up happening. I really do. Um, but history would like sort of push us to almost expect it. I would say Wade. I believe it's Sean Wade. Mm, um, yeah. and, and the reason I say that is because right now there's nothing that's going to be expected of him. Like he's obviously with the Ravens, Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, Jimmy Smith, Anthony Averett. He's weighed down uh, in the pecking order. But um, one injury – and he shoots up quick, man. Yeah. Uh, and and with Tavon Young, that's why I say I hope it doesn't happen. Um, but with Tavon Young, he has the history, the injury history. Hopefully that can be behind him and it can just be done and away with. But if that does happen, I think that he would, cause instead of them kicking Marlin in there like they have, and, and he's done all right there, but he's not a slot corner. It's not him. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it could be Wade uh, because – and and the reason I say surprise, when I say surprise, I mean just somebody uh, who I feel could come in and just have a, a – and not just an immediate impact, but an immediate positive impact. Because immediate impact could be a bad impact too. <laughs> but um, yeah. with him, uh, if he gets that opportunity – and wasn't he like – didn't they say in 2019, I think he was the, what, the, the defensive player of the year, cornerback of the year, something like that? So I know that a lot of people were mock, uh, in mock drafts. They had him in the first round. So, hmm. I mean, that should tell you a lot, right? Yeah, man. So, so that that would be my That's a great that's a great pick there, Sean Wade, because if you look at what he does well, he sometimes they would put him like in the box, especially when he was playing big nickel, have him blitz out, out there. Mm. And oh man, he would fly off the edge there. So if and you know what Wink loves to do, right? So if if we can implement him into some packages, you're right. I think Sean Wade could make an impact. I'm gonna go against the grain, as I tend to do. Um a pick that everybody absolutely hated. Everybody oh, yeah. absolutely hated. The Ravens fan base, the mm-hmm. NFL, everybody said, why did the Ravens draft this guy in the third round? Yeah, that's right. I'm referring to Brandon Stevens. Mm. I said it in my video. I believe we drafted a special teamer in the third mm. round. But mm. what if he actually turns out to be like a great special teamer. And and you know Harbaugh loves to get these guys playing time if they show out on special teams. That's where it starts. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. What if he makes an immediate impact on special teams? Brandon Stevens. Not necessarily saying in, in the starting 22, but 
uh-huh. in uh in special teams what if brandon stevens comes in and makes an immediate impact i'm just saying like i tend to trust the ravens a little bit on these types of picks uh so we'll see maybe he comes in and 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 actually does be the most impactful at least at first i don't know okay and the the next part of his question he said who do you think has the best chance of getting into the ravens ring of honor wow Mm. um that (laughs) that's a tough one yeah because (laughs) Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, based off of Ravens history, because I, I, like I said, I love the Rashad Bateman pick, but I can't go with him based off of Ravens history. Hopefully that history starts changing with Hollywood and with Bateman and, and, and Boykin and just everybody moving forward. But um, based off of their history, I would have to go with, oh, with either oh, oh, oh it's so, it's, this question don't even feel right answering it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I it it just doesn't even feel right answering me because I was gonna say away, but then I was gonna also say um, uh, Cleveland because he's an offensive. Line. Right, I, we gotta right. we gotta skip that one for now. That just <laughs> it, it don't even feel right. That's man. all good. I was I was actually gonna say Bateman if he can uh, if he can get twelve hundred receiving yards because we haven't oh, had a receiver hit twelve hundred yards since nineteen ninety six. So <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, so the next part he said, uh, "Do you see anyone who won't make the team in two seasons?" Oof. Wow. Um. Uh, Ben wow. Mason. <laughs> Perhaps. Oh yeah, that and that that was a pick that like surprised me. Um, yeah, the fullback slash tight end. I just I see him being on the practice squad if that uh, if anything. But um, I almost think maybe even possibly this year. I just because yeah. I know there's been some people like, oh man, we could imagine uh like Patrick Ricard and Ben Mason they the same type of player. Then I've seen some people say, oh, well, Patrick Ricard, his contract's coming up, so maybe they won't re-sign him, and they just replace him for somebody cheaper with Ben Mason. We'll see. But I just – I can't get so caught up in the um, – sort of the hype of having a Ben Mason, even though it's not really hype around it. Yeah. Because uh, that that happened to me last year. Because, boy, I was for sure that Bronson Rick Steiner oh, yeah. was going <laughs> to make the roster. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be crazy. He'll fit oh, yeah. right in the offense. Oh, Yeah. And then Raven said, "Nope." And they didn't even wait till cut down day. They cut yeah. him way early. Yeah. yeah so like the um, whole Ravens fan base would loved Bronson Rex Steiner, and I'm yeah. like, I, I didn't say too much about it because I'm like, let's see if he even makes the team. And lo and behold, mm. didn't even make it to cut day. Right. Yeah. So. Man. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I, so I would go. I guess I would go with uh, with Mason. Um, the the interesting thing is that he's listed as a tight end. I, I'm sure yeah. you saw that that when they drafted him, they said tight end Ben Mason. Yeah. Uh, so what I thought is that this is an insurance policy for Nick Boyle slash Pat Ricard. That's how I saw the pick. Oh, both of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. So, so but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if we'll he takes out anything. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Next question came from my guy, Rainmaker. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and yours. I want to be greedy for just a moment. I live in Philly and I was reading where Zach Ertz probably will be a June 1st cut. Any chance the Ravens go broke or go for broke in a different way? Instead of Julio Jones, maybe go after Zach Ertz. He will be a lot cheaper option, and we all know Lamar loves his tight ends. It will be another way of giving Lamar more weapons, and the more, the merrier. Let that be a good problem for G-Row to have. As always, stay safe. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think. Oh, that that's a name that uh, I forgot about. I forgot all about <laughs> Zach Ertz because we just haven't been hearing anything about him. There was rumored that he was going to either get cut or traded, and then everything just got quiet on him. So... If he was a post June first cut, or uh, I I wouldn't be mad at all if the Ravens went after him because you already got Mark Andrews. You of course have Nick Boyle, and he um hopefully you have a fully healthy Nick Boyle when he comes back. But um having Zach Ertz that would just give you somebody else again, like you said, another weapon, and, and that would force that would be a great problem for Lamar Jackson, G. Row, and the Ravens to have, where you almost have too many weapons, even though you can never have too many weapons. Definitely. So. I mean, if you asked me this like three months ago, oh, yeah, definitely. Right. (laughs) But my thing is we have we just drafted two receivers and I understand like it's, you know, you want to have more weapons available and I totally get it. But we also have guys like Devin Duvernay that I want to see more snaps out of. We have guys like James Prochet that I want to see more playing time. And I I know they're not the tight end position. So but. I want to see what these receivers got, man. I want to. I, I don't want a Zach Ertz to come in and for the Ravens to feel like, oh, but we have to feed Zach Ertz because we're paying him X mm-hmm. amount of dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So, 
right now, ugh, I, I'm, I, I'm not too high on, on the prospect of, of signing a Zach Ertz if he's willing to come in for very cheap. Uh, yeah, sure, maybe. But right now, I, I want to see what we got from these wide receivers first. Uh, I know like the whole narrative is that Lamar prefers his tight ends and all that. I get that. But we have to see what we got. We do. That we, you know, we have all these young guys that we, we, we got to give them some playing time. All right. All right. Last question on this episode. A question from subscribers came from my guy, Gray Ice. He said, hey, Engraven, love the recent content. Appreciate it. He said, I was wondering what some realistic goals for the season should be. Of course, I want to see us win a Super Bowl, and I think we've got a roster capable of it. But that's the highest bar imaginable in football. What are some measuring stick goals that fans can determine if the Ravens had a successful year? We'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter. And this is a uh, nice way to close this episode out. I, I, I love this question. Um, Realistic goals for me, for the Baltimore Ravens, uh, win-wise, um, to obviously make the playoffs, uh, but to, 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 to win in the playoffs, not just win, but win through the year too. Or, or not even win through the year. You're still going to run the ball, but have success uh, through the year and have consistent success through the year. Now, if, if we being honest and being straight up, I, I do not think the Ravens are going to make the Super Bowl this year. I hope they do. I really hope they do. But my real, realistic expectations, I expect them to make at least to the AFC Championship game. Um, but I think that will be progress. That will be progress because they've gotten better year after year. Obviously, first year, no playoff wins, but they squeaked in. Then the next year, they made it all the way in and got that number one seed. Then they got bounced out. But then the following year, they finally won their first playoff game. And they had been down by 10 and came back and they won. And then in the Bills game, yeah, that was a big yikes. But um, I just I, – I, I think the way – not just winning in the playoffs, obviously that's the most important thing, but the way that they win uh, will be important as well. Uh, and, and really just through the regular season too. I, I don't think that the, they have to go from 32nd ranked passing offense to like top 15, anything like that. I don't think they have to make no crazy jump like that. Because this, when you think about it, like this, this team with the 32nd ranked pass offense, obviously their rushing offense is number one, but with that last ranked passing offense, they lead the league in scoring the past two years. So they're doing a lot right. They can make some adjustments to make, do some stuff even righter, even though that's not even a word, but um, they're, they're not like, it's not like this offense is just dead or anything like that. They just got to tweak some stuff here and there. Uh, with the passing offense, and that can take them because they're already on a high level, but that can take them to another level. But just I, I think one of the biggest ways that we can see their success will be in the consistency, I think, of the deep ball um, and the lack of drops. And I know the drops are going to happen. They happen to every team. So I'm not expecting every receiver to catch every single ball that's thrown their way. That would be nice. But I think the lack of crucial drops – uh, and I think I, I really want to see them play a lot better uh, in different weather conditions, like in the cold, in the rain and whatnot, uh, but more so in those colder weather conditions in the playoffs. So just, uh, and I just want to see the team, uh, when it comes to playing the Chiefs, I think that would be a nice measuring stick too to see how they do against Kansas City because every time they play Kansas City, just everything just seems to fall apart. Everything. everything. Um, we can match up with them, but everything just seems to fall apart. Uh, so th those are some of the things that I would say. Just be be better prepared uh, and, and preparation as far as coaching uh, and from execution standpoint, too, um, especially in the playoffs. Because, again, not, not in a cocky way or anything like that, but I, I, I think we all expect the Ravens to get to the playoffs this year. Again, I think right. that's expectation. That's almost like – it's almost like that's, that's the floor. Yeah. Um, but – it's what, what they do when they get there. That, that'll be the biggest measuring stick, man. Because regular season is cool. Regular season is important. And you always got to win in regular season to get to the playoffs. But once you get there, we, we just want to see consistency from this team. And we want to see this team that goes through the regular season and has a lot of games where they absolutely steamroll over teams. We want to see that in the playoffs. We, we don't want to see these shy, timid, scared, <laughs> petrified Ravens walk into the playoffs and like, oh, my goodness, should we, should we score more points than this other team? No, we don't want to see that. We want to see them Ravens come out ready and execute, man. So what, 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 would, what would be your 
your measuring stick for this season to determine that it was a success for the Ravens? AFC Championship. Mm. Straight up, honestly, barring any, barring like a 2015 type injury yeah. season, yeah. right? Uh, this team is has a good mix of veterans and young good players, and you know that's nothing new for Ravens fans. That's usually how we roll. We usually have a good mix of veterans and young good players, but this team. I said it today, man, in one of my videos. I said, it's almost complete, you know, yeah. on paper at least. We have mm -hmm. the offensive line now with Villanueva on paper. Right. Edge rusher, I would like to see them sign maybe a Justin Houston mm -hmm. or Ryan Kerrigan. And if they do that, to me, the, yeah. the team is complete, right? I mean, right. Uh, you know, like I said, barring any injuries. But, yeah, I think AFC Championship should absolutely be the expectation for this team because – I understand you have teams like the Buffalo Bills, right? They're going to be there. The Chiefs, of course. Mm -hmm. The Browns, even. I mean, the they, Browns are pff, they are looking really good. Uh, yeah. They're going to be there. But we can beat all of those teams, right? We know we can beat all of these teams. That's the craziest part. I know for sure we could have beaten the Bills last season. I don't care what anybody says. We could have beaten the Bills in the playoff game. But you know what happened there. So yeah. AFC Championship should be the floor. And like you said, the passing game, what I want to see is, I, I know that this has been said multiple times, but creativity. You uh, see yeah. all these other quarterbacks, mm -hmm. these young quarterbacks, they get easy passes, like quick screens, like creative play calling here. Right. You see Josh Allen has all these short, quick passes, gets the yeah. ball out quick. You think Lamar's incapable of doing that? You ask a lot of these media guys, social media guys, oh, no, Lamar can't do what Josh Allen did. Yeah, he can. Josh Allen does a lot of quick screens, a lot of quick passes, and then he goes deep. Now, Josh Allen has probably a deeper, better arm there than, uh, than Lamar does, but he can definitely do a lot of these things that you see in these offenses. I want Greg Roman to just watch... I feel like he doesn't even watch NFL, bro. Like, wh he doesn't even watch some of these play calls, dude. Get creative. That's all I want to see. Get easy, cheap yardage for Lamar Jackson through the air, just like all of these other young quarterbacks get. Uh, and I think if they can do that, for me, all I'm asking, I know we were the 32nd ranked passing attack last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want it to be at least 12 spots better. That's it. Top mm -hmm. 20. Ooh. That's all I want. Okay. That's all I want. If you can do that, and you still have the best running game uh, in the NFL, that's going to be a dangerous offense, really dangerous offense. So Now, would you be willing uh, to sacrifice? Like, you know, our Ravens had that number one rushing attack right now. Yeah. In order to jump to the top 20, would you be willing to sacrifice the running game? I mean, because it, it would happen. Yeah. Um, but would you be willing to sacrifice going into uh, – going from number one rushing team to a 10 or maybe for 10 to 15? Russian uh, yeah, I would. Um, I, I think 15 might be a little low, but 10 I'd be fine with. I'd be yeah. fine with that because, yeah, that means we have more dimensions on offense, right? Mm -hmm. And I've said this previously, like this, is, this was my case against Greg Roman, <laughs> which I know a lot of people have made, but <laughs> with this personnel, Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, even we'll throw in Justice Hill in there. Why not? You don't need this offensive running yep. mastermind, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need that. Anybody could come in and honestly have a top 10 running game with just this personnel. That's, that's my true. belief. That's I my agree. belief. So that's why I didn't necessarily like the fact that we kept Greg Roman, but, you know, what are you going to do? They, they did it anyway. So, yeah, man. So if they sacrifice a little bit in the running game, I'm totally fine with that as long as we get more creative and we're able to move the ball in different ways so we just don't get absolutely manhandled and embarrassed in the playoffs again. Yeah, that, that's true, too. Um, and I know uh, when we had a late round corner on uh, about a month and change ago, yep. um, he made a really, really good point uh, when it came to because somebody asked a question about – uh, receiver, I think it was my guy Rodell asked the questions about how this 17 game schedule could possibly help the rec the Ravens receivers yeah. finally get over a thousand yards. <laughs> and um, what late round corner was saying, he said that it's 
with the yards, it, it just it wouldn't be as important. He said he would rather take a receiver getting like seven, eight hundred yards uh, with maybe like eight or nine touchdowns. Than a thousand eleven hundred eleven hundred yard receiver oh, yeah. with like two or three touchdowns. Definitely. Um. So so that goes uh, back to that point of efficiency. Uh. Just Ravens just need to be efficient. And I know that was a kind of a weird question to to, to ask if the Raven if you'll be willing to sacrifice them being number one in rushing uh, for them to be top twenty in passing. Yeah. Uh. Because I think that the biggest thing that we just wouldn't know depending on how things went would be. Uh, the efficiency, the scoring efficiency. How many touchdowns were they getting? Because yards, again, Dak Prescott, he would continue to be a league leader in passing yards. Deshaun Watson, of course, last year, league leader in passing yards, but they were four and twelve, I think. Yeah, exactly. So it just, it's obviously not all about the numbers, and we got to look all a lot about deeper. the points, not yeah, about the yards. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Those are the biggest numbers that that matter. Because yep. those numbers, they tell uh, uh, the biggest story than everything else. Absolutely. And uh, I actually watched that video with Michael, uh, a.k.a. Late Round Corner. And I saw the Hakeem Butler shade, and I just want to say, <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> what happened to Kelvin Harmon? Ask him that next time you see him. Oh, see yeah. Because <laughs> wow, that was his favorite that. receiver. Yeah, that was his guy, man. Yeah, but anyway, that, that's all I wanted to say. <laughs>